So I've got back into using my aqua markers recently and I thought that I would shoot a tutorial showing you how I use the aqua markers to do this um, spring red tulip that I took a photo of on one of my walks the other day. I'm looking to fit this into a small box frame. I think it's 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters, so that's the kind of frame you can see I've measured out, and I'm trying to fill that frame with the pencil drawing using just a mechanical pencil, I think it's HB. Once I've got everything sketched out, uh, the flower and the background, I soften those pencil lines because I'm using aqua markers, which are like watercolor, a transparent medium, so I go over some of those hard pencil lines with a rubber to make them lighter and I'm using a Bockingford paper here which is brilliant for the aqua marker, St. Cuthbert's Mill. It is absolutely terrific. You don't have to use 300 grams per square meter but it is the best that I've found to use with the aqua markers by far. And once I've softened those um, pencil lines you can see me going straight in and doing one of these petals with a scarlet marker. And one of the first things that I do is I work on a small area of the picture to make sure I'm using the right colors and the right techniques. And this picture is no different. You can see me choosing one of the smallest petals, first of all, to start with the scarlet marker. And then I'll sort of start moving into the bigger areas once I'm quite happy with what I'm trying to do. So I've sort of roughly sort of popped on some scarlet using a thick nib. And now I'm using some straw yellow for, for where the petal's going to get lighter and sort of more orangey towards the center. Uh, and then I'm going to pop some sangria in which is this sort of darkish red and that's going to be my main shadow kind of areas. And as you can see I put the colors on quite roughly. I'm not too fussy at this stage because I know that when I um, start using the brush and the water I'm going to blend all of these colors together anyway. So it doesn't matter that there might be a few little streaky bits or a few sort of gaps in it because I'm going to use that water, blend those colors towards the edge of that petal where it will be a bit paler. So as I start to blend the colors together, you can see I'm using a, a size 4 round synthetic brush. I just found that synthetic brushes being a little bit tougher and not as soft as like some of the posher brushes like sable and squirrel hair and all that kind of stuff. They're, because they're a little bit stiffer, they are much better for actually blending these colors together that you put down on the paper. Uh, just that, that extra sort of strength and, and toughness within the, the synthetic uh, brush hairs just allows you to move that color around and blend that color around a lot more effectively than uh, what is quite a soft, usual watercolor brush. So I would totally recommend trying to use um, synthetic brushes, usually the ones that are made for acrylics, for blending these colors together. And notice how I've cleaned my brush and added clean water a lot when I'm doing this bit where I'm trying to do the change between the red and the yellow. I know the red will swamp the yellow if I don't keep a nice clean brush uh, and allow that yellow to shine. So once I'm happy with that one I know that I can do some of the bigger petals and some of the bigger areas. And what you can see me doing here is moving and leaving a gap between the last petal that I did and this one that I'm currently working on and that's purely because if I worked on two petals next to each other while they're still wet, they're going to bleed and run together, which can be a really cool effect if that's what you want to happen. But I wanted each of these petals to be really sharp edged and really stand out to, to give it that kind of 3D look. If they start, if the colors start bleeding between each one, then it's going to lose that kind of definition. It's going to become fuzzier and softer, which again, if it's a technique that, that you're looking for, look great. But that's not what I wanted from this one. So I've deliberately left a buffer, I've left a gap between the first petal I did and then this one that you can see me working on right now. And I use the same colors, Scarlet and Sangria. Sangria for the sort of darker areas and the darker shadows. And I blend those two together, again using a size 4 synthetic round brush. And at this point you can see me blending the Sangria and the Scarlet together, trying quite hard to make sure that there's not a sudden shift between the red and, and the sort of darkish burgundy kind of color of the sangria. So I'm, I'm really going along those edges, trying to blend them uh, together so that it's a gradual change. And then I decide that the shadows near the top, they're a little bit too strong. So even after the, the aqua markers are dried, you can go in with a brush with clean water on it and you can kind of re-blend those colors together. If you think there's too harsh uh, a marker, too harsh a shadow there, you can blend them together again, maybe blot it if you need to, or I just allowed the clean water and the blending to, to soften that shadow. And here you can see me working on one of the bottom petals using Scarlet and Sangria again. And again, I've made sure that I'm not working on two petals that are going to be wet right next to each other because I'm really looking to avoid that kind of bleeding scenario that I talked about earlier. And I left the top of that petal you can see me working on now, I left that white, I didn't put any marker there because the light is catching the top of that and I want it to be paler. So when I mix those colors together, 
want that um, top of that petal to, to be much lighter. Here that I'm working on the side of this petal, you can see me doing exactly the same thing. I leave this section along the edge where I'm working with the brush now. I've left that white because I want that to be really, really pale because it's the petal as it curls around and is closer to us than the background of that petal. And you can see me using clean water here, going in with clean water on that brush to make sure that the edge of this petal is going to be um, as pale as possible. And again, I'm just running some clean water down the edge of that, which will create a sort of a background effect. The clean water will spread outwards, hopefully, into the red and make it seem paler. So again, I move over to a different petal, so I'm not working on two that are right next to each other. And I'm putting on the Scarlet again and the Sangria and leaving any little areas that I think are going to be paler. So that as I flood the color around in there, it's working on a sort of white background. So it will be a paler part of the, the paint than where I've flooded lots of color and it's gonna be very bright, uh, vibrant and very, very dark. So again, you can see me trying to blend along the edge of where the Sangria meets the Scarlet, letting some of those colors run because you know the paint is and the water is so wet, those colors can just gently run into each other and blend on their own almost. And then this is where I noticed, if you can see on that petal where I'm working with the brush right now, there was a bit of staining. So I'd put on the marker pen and it had stained the paper a little bit. So what I do here is, is a bit retroactive. I go back in afterwards with a clean brush and just clean water on the brush, and I just try and rework that particular bit of paint, that particular bit of aqua marker, to kind of blend it back in again, and hopefully make that edge where you could see the stain much softer and, and basically disguise that it's there. Um, why is it stained? Sometimes the pigment that is in some of the markers does seem to have a tendency to stain the paper a little bit more than um, other pigments do. Some you put on, you add water, and it's absolutely brilliant. It's just like regular watercolor, and there's no staining at all. This was a particularly strong red, and I got the feeling that if I didn't work on it quickly enough, and again, the same on that, the top of that petal there, and blend it together quickly enough and, and thoroughly enough with the brush, then it would leave that kind of stain. So that, that gave me a sort of thought for the rest of the picture, as you just see me blotting the edge here and, and picking up that color with, with a bit of tissue. It gave me the idea that for the rest of the picture, I would have to spend a bit more time and more thoroughly blend uh, my colors together to try and make sure that there was no staining because I couldn't backtrack now and start using a different red marker. It was gonna look totally weird. I, you know, I had to keep using the Scarlet and the Sangria. So I just had to find a way to minimize it any potential uh, staining that would happen by blending them for longer and much more thoroughly. And on this big petal now you can see me doing, you can see I've got the straw yellow on, I've got the scarlet on, and now I'm putting quite a lot of sangria down that edge because of course this is the inside of the petal and that bit on the left that I did earlier is the outside of the petal as it curves around. So to get that idea of three dimensions on the petal, I've got to make sure I do the interior bit, the bit I'm working on now, darker so there's a nice contrast between the sort of dark sangria edge and the lovely light um, edge of the scarlet down that left hand side of the petal. So here you can see me you know doing what I talked about trying to work the colors together more and you can see because it's a bigger area and a bigger petal I've actually moved at that point to a bigger brush uh, I'm using I think it's a size 6 uh, acrylic synthetic brush uh, and that is so that I can obviously blend and do this big area much more quickly and actually load up that brush with a bit more water as well. And as you see me work down into this uh, straw yellow section, I have to keep putting the brush into clean water, giving it a bit of a swizzle, but giving it a bit of a wash because it's loaded up with that red pigment, which is just going to swamp that yellow if I let it. So I keep popping the brush into some clean water and then coming back and trying to blend the yellow in with the red um, so that you can actually see the yellow. Otherwise, there was so much red on that brush, it would just be red from, you know, tip, you know, from the top to the bottom. And even though it's a small, delicate area, I don't really have time to change brushes, so I just make sure I use the very fine tip of that size 6 round. Um, here you can see me doing the bottom petal, and again, I'm making sure that I'm not working on a petal that is against another one that is wet, so there's going to be no bleeding, nice crisp edges. Uh, and I'm putting on the, the Scarlet and the Sangria, and again, leaving that white section there, which is gonna be an area which I want to be a lot paler. So when I start blending them together now with the, the water uh, and getting that Scarlet and that Sangria to move around, 
that section where I left it white should hopefully end up being paler because there's no background color in the first place. At this point I've got half of it done and I'm quite pleased with the way that the shadows, the sangria shadows are working on that left hand side of the tulip as I'm putting in the straw yellow and the scarlet on this last big petal. I'm looking at the rest of it and I'm really pleased with the highlights that I've got, the light areas and the mid areas and then those dark areas which is helping to make the picture look way more three dimensional because of those strong, strong sangria shadows. As I finish the colors off on this, this big petal on, on the right hand side, you can see I go back in with a big brush again. This is my size six round synthetic brush and I'm using that to blend in those colors. A little less sangria on this petal because this petal is catching a lot more light than the one on the left hand side. So I really want to emphasize that. And notice how for this bit now where I'm blending the straw yellow and the, the scarlet together, what I did was I started by working from the bottom of the straw yellow section and I worked upwards into the, there you go, you can see me doing it now, I'm working upwards into the red. Hopefully that means I've got a bit more control over that yellow. It stays a lot more yellow on this side of the flower as it then meets the red and blends together. Whereas previously I worked the red down into the scarlet and I think it ended up being way too orange on that left hand side near, near the center of the flower. As I finish up on this petal, what I'm doing here is I'm using a clean brush and a dry brush to work back up into that pigment and sort of sweep that brush up the very edge of that petal in the hope that I get a, a paler edge where it, it meets the sort of darker red that's underneath it. And there you go, you can see as it's dried, that dry brush has picked up that wet paint and it has made that sort of edge of that petal, that inner edge of that petal, paler. And hopefully it gives it that nice light and dark contrast, which makes it stand out and look more three-dimensional um, than if I just left it a sort of plain old um, scarlet. So I'm pretty much finished as I come to this last edge of, of one of the big, big petals. I know that all I'm going to have to do after this is the center section with the sort of small bits of pollen, and I think it's called the stamen, the, the middle bit of the flower there. So I go in here and I'm using uh, straw yellow because this bit is going to be a lot paler to make it stand out against the sort of reds that are surrounding it. So just doing those little sort of stalks, uh, straw yellow. And I also decide that the edge of the petals on this side, where they were supposed to be yellow, that they're a bit too light. So I'm using what I call raw marker here. I'm just going to pop this marker on and I'm not actually going to try and blend it in with water afterwards. I'm just going to use it to darken the edge of that petal so it's a bit yellow but it's a sort of darker yellow and no need to add water. So also notice that this bit I'm using the fine nib of the aqua markers because this is a very very small precise delicate part of the painting that I'm having to work on. I want maximum control for the detail that I'm popping in here so I'm using those those fine nibs. I flip the aqua marker around and I'm no longer using the thick nib. So just like I was using the, the fine nib, I've also swapped back to using the, the smaller thin brush for this section. So the size four round, which has got a really nice sort of thin tip, almost like the kind of rigger brushes that you can get in, in watercolor for doing super, super fine lines. And it's brilliant for doing this precise uh, middle part of the, the flower with the stamen. So, Taking a step back, I've got to do the, the sort of the little spearheady bits that have got the pollen on. I'm not quite sure what the name for those is, but these were a really dark brown. So for the first time here, I'm using uh, a darker brown marker. This is called mahogany. Uh, and I just put little bits on. I don't want it to be too dark at this stage. So I just put little strokes of the, the pen on using the thin nib. And then I go in with the small brush and I just try and blend them a little bit together. Um, leaving some dark edges and using the rest of that water mixing with the mahogany to, to spread that brown over the sort of, they are a spearhead type of shape. And it's around this point where I notice there's a few little gaps, a few little white gaps in there around the, the stamen that need filling. So I get my marker and I go back in there using scarlet uh, and a bit of sangria to just sort of blend that bit back in, make it as dark as it's supposed to be and also use it to just trim the edge of the stamen, make it a little bit thinner because I think it was a bit bit too thick. 
the paintings at that stage where I can be a little bit more fussy now because it's you know reaching the end stages and I notice that those little spearheads that have got the pollen on they're not quite as dark as they appear in the reference photo that I'm using so all I do is decide to go back in with another sort of bit of mahogany a second layer if you will um, and then working that around with the brush so that I can make those little sort of spearhead shapes the with, bit with the pollens on a lot darker brown which is good because they stand out then against the red so next up is a bit of a fun bit, and this is the sort of dusty bits of pollen that have fallen off and are sort of um, dotted around the, the insides um, of the petals. And for this, I just use the mahogany marker, use the fine tip, and I basically just dot it on. Um, I think in painting this is usually called something like stippling. Uh, and I'm just dotting those little brown dots on to suggest the scattered and, and the sort of spilt pollen um, lining the inside of the leaf. And it's good because it gives a different dimension to the painting. Everything's quite smoothly painted so far. So to be able to add these little dotted bits of pollen um, gives a, a sort of texture and, and a bit of a contrast within the picture. And I'm just going to leave them when I put them on, what I call raw marker again. Uh, there's no point trying to add water to them. They're so small and so delicate in the first place that they stand out nice and sharp at the moment. If I go start trying to add water to them, they're going to get all sort of smudgy and diffuse and get bigger. And adding these little bits of pollen, it's just one of those little moments with the painting where you've done all right and it's looking good, and then it's just adding a small little detail like that or just doing a little brush stroke here or there, which suddenly seems to set off the picture and everything seems to start to work and, and fall into place a little bit more. So I can put this extra yellow on, on the stalks and the stamen at this point with a bit more confidence because I'm really pleased with the, the way the dotted pollen has worked in the background. I add a little bit more scarlet and a little bit more sangria to, to the stamen at this point, uh, the center of the flower, because I just felt that it wasn't quite dark enough. It was too pale and it needed a bit more contrast. It needed a bit more colored shadow on it. So that's what you can see me doing. I've just dotted in a couple of extra bits of, of color and now blending them in with that small size 4 round brush again. And while that um, brush is loaded with some kind of orange color from, from that bit that I'm blending, I just use that loaded color on the brush to just outline the edges of the other stalks to give them a little bit of depth. Uh, and then I just decide I've overdone the shadow a little bit on that middle bit. So I go back in with the tissue and I just lightly, you know, uh, blot it a little bit. Just take it back a little bit so it's not so strong. And then one of the last things that I do is just use raw marker to define the edges of that stamen, the curved edges a little bit more. So the flower is pretty much done and with the background on it as well, um, I'm quite pleased with the end result. I think when I compare it to one of my earlier videos of the red poppy and how that looks, uh, I think I've gotten a bit better with the aquamarker since then. Certainly hope you agree. Uh, and if you like the video and found it useful, please subscribe and like.